What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Chopper channel coming to you with another edition of Liddy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. Hit that like button, subscribe button, and notification bell. That way I can keep making these videos. You like that. Then also you can be apprised whenever great content is going live at Odd Chopper. Oh my God, I'm burying the lead. I can't contain myself. I feel like a little kid on Christmas. Bojan Bogdanovich, Boya. I can't tell you enough how much I love this man. I told my wife, guess what? boy or girl, Bojan Bogdanovich Lindquist might be the first name that we have to go with. I don't know. We're having discussions. Regardless, I love this man more than anything. 31 points. Backdoored at 28 of his 31 in the second half. It was the largest individual bet of my entire 2022 season. And I know if you were in the premium discord, which you can sign up below at the link below, if you click on that, sign up using EL Insider, it was a party. It was bonkers to watch that second half together. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. But most importantly, the screenshots, the the the, the vibes. I mean, it is just incredible. It was a very special night for me, not just to be able to win money for myself, but to be able to help you guys make money finding this prop that has just been an absolute print factory ATM machine of late. Doesn't get a whole lot better than that, but... We only had three games. I'm two for two now going into this Dallas game. We need an over on 31 and a half points for Luka. That's kind of where I landed on there. I also played a small play on the money line there, but nothing matters. Bojan, 12 units. I've never, I've never done anything like that. But when that thing came out as 18 and a half, you had to slam the over. So hopefully you guys are watching these videos day in, day out. You can kind of start at a certain point, figure out where my players are going to be going. So I'll talk about my college basketball play in a little bit. That's where you're going to bet at DraftKings. You bet $5. You're going to get yourself $150 bucks over there. You just have to have a winning bet over on DraftKings to get that $150 on a money line. I'm going to help you find that. But we got 11 games. It is time to dig right into the NBA slate. Hey, what happened on Tuesday? It was beautiful. It was epic. It was fantastic. But this is a forward-thinking show. We got to win money today, Wednesday. Let's get to the picks. Welcome to the upside down to start our day off and the Clippers going to Orlando to take on the magic. Why does this feel like an episode of Stranger Things? Quite simply, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George are not on the injury report while Norman Powell, Luke Kennard, John Wall, and Marcus Morris Sr. are all out. Yes, almost the entire whole unit that filled in for those two superstars for the last couple weeks, they are out. The superstars are in and playing basketball on the road. Pretty wild profile to break down considering they'll both be on minutes limits, but we'll try to figure out if there's something here. As for the Magic, Jalen Suggs and Gary Harris join Chuma Okiki, Okiki, and Jonathan Isaac on the shelf. The core pieces remain intact here from baby I'm Jalen Suggs. I don't know what this world's gonna bring. Trick daddy for anyone? I'll continue on. At first glance, it's not hard to think that the Clippers minus six looks like value, looks like a place to land. But number one pick, Paulo Bancaro, looked just fine on the floor alongside Giannis, Drew Holiday, and the Bucks on Monday. And though it didn't result in a win, it did result in a cover, which is more than live at home here getting six, as my model has this projected around five and a half when accounting for the minutes limit for both PG-13 and Kawhi, and then everybody else being out. So overall, this is going to be a decent spot for DFS purposes for a lot of you guys from the Clippers side. I think there's going to be a lot of injury news that we're going to have to shuffle through on an 11-gamer. That creates value, creates other best spots to be looking at, but I'd prefer to accumulate a little bit more of a sample size with this iteration of the Clippers, especially with this star duo back, before we start attacking lines with any sort of confidence. That makes this a lean play on the Magic side, getting the points. As the Clippers remain 29th in adjusted offensive rating and have had a pretty weak strength of schedule that's bailed them out, hence the 14-11 and 11 record, despite not having Kawhi and Paul George for a lot of it, I expect positive things for them going forward. I expect that 29th rating in adjusted offensive rating to go way up, no doubt. But no need to tango here on an 11-game slate. Let's go quickly along. Lean the magic, which sounds disgusting to say out loud. I do not want to bet them, but I got to give you a bet from this one. That would be it right now. Maybe something else op opens up a little bit later, but six, six and a half, those are your prevailing numbers. Off to another disgusting spot here from a game perspective, Hornets and Nets playing in Brooklyn. And you know the deal by now, with Charlotte especially, no true point guard with LaMelo Ball and Dennis Smith Jr. out. 
James Booknight's been out of the rotation. He's dealing with a lot. It's literally just Terry Rozier and Tsunami Poppy Kelly Oubre Jr. They're out there chucking with reckless abandon on a night-to-night basis. It's not a pretty brand of basketball. I don't suggest watching it. I've watched too much Charlotte basketball. That's about all I really want to talk about from their side. But since the total in line do look perfectly efficient to me, we head to the prop market where I feel really, really good about the work we've done with Kyrie Irving's points props of late. He's been inexplicably around the 22 and a half number a lot lately, which for lack of a better term is trash. The man still has a 27.3% usage rating this year, trailing Kevin Durant, obviously, and he's playing upwards of 40 minutes a night. Uh, 22 and a half, way too low. And now I've been happy to fire that up multiple times here over the last week to the tune of 27 points each last week. But then fortunately on Sunday, when that number got moved up to 23 and a half, I didn't bet NBA, which saved me from a seven for 21 shooting dud and a mere 18 points out of him there. But interesting to see the book still account for it and move him up to 24 and a half in this spot, which I repeat is still way too low in my model. I've got him around 27 and a half based on the usage and the minutes, which are out of control right now. 24 and a half points is at nearly standard standard juice as well. Minus 115 at Caesars to be exact. Uh, pizza, pizza. It's just flat out wrong. And Charlotte's starting to regress defensively with their 20th adjusted defensive rating. This is nothing but a stone cold lock. Take it to the bank. Lock, button, play. Yeah, you heard me. It's not Bojan. It's Kyrie. He was an idiot earlier this year. He's not Bojan. Bojan's perfect. We're going over 24 and a half points for Kyrie Irving. Lock, button with me. We move along to the next game. Hawks and Knicks up next, and we go from one points prop in Kyrie to another one in Trey Young for the Hawks. Now, aside from Trey in the Garden narrative that him and a bunch of other NBA players have when enjoying playing in one of the most storied buildings in the league, this is a math thing for me. Trey's got by far the team's highest usage rate at 33.8%. And we didn't know how that fit was going to work with DeJounte Murray, but he has still been the alpha. He's still playing 30, uh, upwards of 38 minutes a night. And with no John Collins on the floor now, that's extra offensive responsibility for a guy who already has a ton of offensive uh, responsibility on his squad. In other words, it's super simple when he's sitting at just 26 and a half points. Another freaking lock play baby we're to fire up two of the day's three lock plays on props in the first three games but hey here we are i'm not the one who makes these rules they just show up and i bet the things i like and i lock the things i really like it's just too good of a spot for both him for trey young yeah for trey young and kyrie irving and i don't parlay things much but i will say these two together in the early window Pretty intriguing. There's a points prop I like a lot later coming up too. Bojan's on the slate, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. I am contemplating the combo of Kyrie and Trey. Just wanted to throw that out there. But a lock play right now, already bet it. The over of 26 and a half points for Trey Young. Go and get you some. Hello, Lakers on a back-to-back. And hello, refunded points props and every other prop for those of you who bet overs on Anthony Davis on Tuesday. Yeah. Sounds like FanDuel refunded you and a bunch of you. We'll see what DraftKings does. We'll see what some of the other sites do. I'm sure everybody's going to get refunded. We'll have a conversation about the refunds on a different date because it's coming out of your pocket eventually. But very happy for you. If you didn't get screwed by that random illness that wasn't announced whatsoever, we need better beat reporters. That's the name of the game. We need better beat reporters. Do your damn job and then do your dance. But do your job. Anyway, let's talk about this a little bit but there's no line on the board here right now because anthony davis got ruled out nothing got announced before it usually when teams are on back-to-backs like this you're not going to see that number posted for a while and when i record these six seven eight at night my time not normally going to have that line available to me yet especially when somebody as important as anthony davis who had been smashing coming into that cleveland game uh made all the sense in all the land but hey We got that under. We cashed that ticket. That felt very nice from that Cavs and Lakers game. Only 218 total points in that one. Even though you got Donovan Mitchell just going berserk. Jared Allen back in the fold. That worked out very nicely. Anthony Davis wasn't ducking him. But I think Toronto, 
really is going to be the side you're interested in on this one. I'm going to lean the money line right now. They are back to full strength. Everything is coming up roses for them. Pascal Siakam in the mix. Fred Van Vliet, Gary Trent off the bench, starting to be a little bit more effective at times. And if he's not, you just run with Scotty Barnes and OG Ananobi for a bajillion minutes because that's the Nick Nurse way. I am leaning Toronto. Lakers on a back-to-back, possibly without Anthony Davis. I think we're going to probably have to make that a piece of a parlay. If we really want to go Toronto money line, they're going to be juiced heavily, heavily uh, if you don't have Anthony Davis on the floor on Wednesday. So I know a lot of you know the artist Drake. Hey, let's bet the college that's it's not named after Drake. That's a stupid bit. But I'm from South Dakota, Sioux Falls, to be precise, in case you guys didn't know. Most people say, hey, you're the only person I've ever met from South Dakota. But here I am. And you know what's just south of us is Omaha, Nebraska. Yes, two and a half, three hours straight down the interstate. You get yourself to lovely Nebraska. Always enjoyed my time there. Uh, Old Town, beautiful little spot. You can go hang out. Go check out the bars. But they have the Battle of the Crosstown Rivals. You got Drake. You got Omaha. But guess what? Not going to be much of a battle. It's going to be more of a murder because you have a 19 and a half point favorite Drake team facing Omaha. This is your college basketball bet of the day. You need to fire up $5 or more over at DraftKings. So you sign up in the video description box below. Bet $5 or more on the money line of Drake. I know you're not going to get a great return on that, but you're going to get a great return in terms of the $150 that goes directly into your account over at DraftKings. So take advantage of that. Bet Drake. It is a stone cold lock the same way Bojan Bogdanovic in second halves turns into Jesus Christ himself. So take advantage of these promotions at Sportsbooks. We have DraftKings going right now. Bet $5 on Drake. Get yourself $150. let us get back to the NBA picks. Am I somehow just in love with points props tonight? It might be a buh. It might be a Bojan thing. I'm just saying. It might be. I'm okay with it. I'm happy. It's great. He got it done again. It feels so good, suckers. Let's go. But DeMar DeRozan, he's got a number posted at 25 and a half for this matchup with the Wizards. And maybe it's just me. But this number is too low for a guy averaging 25 and a half on the number. And now is facing a Washington team with about as much interest in playing defense as I do of watching another season of The Bachelorette where they have two Bachelorettes on the show. I mean, what are we doing here? I'm watching it for the one person to date 50 dudes. Like the one hot chick dating 50 dudes. I don't want to watch two of them date and deal with this whole pool of dudes. And here's the thing. I mean, my wife makes me watch this stuff. And when there's two, it's just, it's a lot to deal with, you know? You guys don't relate? <clears throat> Back to basketball, sports, manly things. DeMar DeRozan doesn't have any competition for minutes. And while his usage is at 28.4%, which is a far cry from Trey Young's number, that's still a tick higher than Kyrie. Now, I've already locked two of these points props, so I can't make it three, right? Right? No. Yeah, you heard me. Three player props, three points props, three lock buttons. Don't worry. I still have some goodness waiting in the wings. I have a couple likes coming up, a couple of sides, a couple of totals. But these three player props are my favorite plays on the slate. So I know some of you can't bet player props. That's very, very tough for you. But I want to give you the best plays, and these are it. Let's recap. Kyrie Irving over 24 and a half, Trey Young over 26 and a half, and DeMar DeRozan smack dab in the middle, just right. Like the three little bears in the middle, 25 and a half points. Could be a fun day if two out of three hit. And if all three hit, I might be in. I mean, I, you might not ever see me on the show again. So just saying, put the three together in a player prop. I want to see screenshots, send them to at Eric Lindquist on Twitter, and I'll be sure to give you a shout out again, just a theoretical two out of three would be super nifty but we're riding high after Bojan let's take a shot on putting all three together Trey Young Kyrie Irving DeMar DeRozan but DeMar DeRozan over 25 and a half the third lock on the day for Wednesday December 7th and this one should go rather quickly because by now you should expect wonky things when the Thunder are playing basketball like I don't know they just rest random people on random days and there's really no explanation for anything going on with their rotations so i don't really like betting them i don't really like talking about them i try to attack them when there's value that's for sure 
which there might be here. We just got Ja Morant rested. We just got Jaron Jackson Jr. injury maintenance rested as well on Monday. They found a way to beat Miami on Monday. What is Miami doing the last two days, by the way? I, I don't even understand. I lost my bet on them on Monday. Tuesday stayed far away, uh, stayed clear of the atmosphere over that uh, situation, other than Bojan, of course. But we're looking at the Memphis side here, and I think... There's just too much value to give up at minus five and a half. I have this projected around seven, and you always get that outside shot of something random popping up from the OKC side. Now, it was the Memphis side on Monday, but that's kind of understandable coming off a weekend of basketball. You have a very long year ahead of you. We're playing regular season basketball all the way up until April. I'm telling you, though, OKC will not be focused on any playoff basketball whatsoever, and that makes that... A very interesting situation. If Shea or Giddy or somebody got randomly ruled out, would it really surprise you? I hope not. And that is where I look at a number like this. Five and a half at home. Looks as though they're getting everybody, but Desmond Bain, who continues to be out, so that sucks. But everybody else looks good for Memphis. I think there's a decent enough play. Nothing to get carried away with, but a meager, nice little like. We get the Sacramento Kings heading to Milwaukee for this one. And uh, the story of the day. The story of the last week has been Chris Middleton coming back to this lineup on Friday. Exactly kind of what you'd expect. We're still looking at Drew Holiday prop. So just because I'm liking something else on this does not mean I'm getting away from that Drew Holiday prop because it is still looking really nice. I don't know if it's going to open at seven or six and a half yet. And also by now, if you watch enough of these videos, I want to give you new information from time to time. I hope by now you can know Drew Holiday is on my radar because that assist rate still looks really, really nice alongside Chris Middleton in the last couple games. We almost got a triple-double out of him in Orlando the other night. That would have been really nifty. But I'm looking at Sacramento up, up, up in pace, going up against Milwaukee, which also up in pace. And yet, 234.5 is the number we're looking at here. I'm a little bit confused, to be honest. Again, sixth in pace are the Sacramento Kings. Milwaukee, middle of the road at 16th, but they're third in defensive efficiency. Maybe that's part of why this number is factored in, but with Chris Middleton back on the floor, a decent enough two-way player, but surely an offensive upgrade over anything else Milwaukee's been rolling out at the three, I expect points. I expect this game to move. It's not a double-digit spread, so people who worry about blowouts when it comes to stuff like this, it, it blows my mind. I'm simply looking at possessions for 48 minutes, and both of these teams seem as though over the course of the last month have been up, up, up in pace. We're talking third for Sacramento, 12th for Milwaukee. That makes it a very intriguing like play on the over. Nothing to get carried away with. I'm not parlaying this. I'm not a parlay guy as is, even though I've talked about them more on this show than ever before. Shout out producer Alicia. She's like, yes, that's very true. That's very true. Over 234 and a half. That is the number I'm looking at. I have this more around 237, 237 and a half. That makes this a decent amount of value. If I'm looking at anything in addition to a Drew Holiday prop that I want to be parlaying with it, the over of that and the over of this looking great together. I don't want to talk about the Timberwolves. Do I have to talk about the Timberwolves? I think I have to talk about the Timberwolves. Andrew Nemhard and the Pacers. Yeah, you heard what I said. That guy is absolutely out of control. Facing the Minnesota Timberwolves. Can we just recap how good this dude is? Indiana might have gotten an absolute steal at number 31 in relief of Tyrese Halliburton. He single-handedly carried this basketball team to a W against Golden State, which is no small feat. Not just the defending champions, but this is a basketball team that's starting to play better. And now you have the Pacers come in with Andrew Nampard and play 41 minutes, 31 points, 13 assists, and 8 boards. I don't know where this came from, but if you're a Pacers fan, you have got to love it. Because if he can be the combination piece to Tyrese Halliburton, you are really enjoying your life right now. And I'm really not liking it as a Minnesota fan. That's for damn sure. Carl Anthony Towns continuing to be out four to six weeks. Not really a lot of other in, uh, injury information there. Anthony Edwards, uh, Rudy Gobert, who tripped a dude and apparently didn't get suspended. That'd be Kenrich Williams. One of the dirtiest plays I've seen in a long time. That's for sure. Glad Kenrich Williams did not get hurt, but no suspension in sight. Kind of surprising to me, not going to lie. But regardless, I do think this Indiana team, if you get Miles Turner and Tyrese Halliburton back in this lineup, this number would not be plus four. I can tell you that much. It would be more around plus one, plus one and a half. I think they both 
play. Now, Miles Turner, it was announced as a hamstring injury. Tyrese Halliburton, he's been sick, and then it was a groin issue. So a lot of weird things going on from the Indiana side. They found something in Andrew Nemhard. So knowing that that's at least my backup plan, a rookie that I really think has got it. If you watch that Golden State game, you know he's got it. Yeah, baby, he's got it. He's on Venus. He's on fire. It's your desire. Plus four on the Indiana Pacers. I kind of call it a lean, but it's more in the light category. I'm just saying, it's something I'm starting to talk myself into. I did write lean on the sheet because, again, I'm not convinced of it yet. But Andrew Nemhard might be the truth. So it's something I'm paying attention to. I want to react, though. If I can get Halliburton and Turner in, that becomes an instant like something I would want at the plus four number. But you got to beat that news in some way, shape, or form. As it stands right now, simply a lean. Two more games to go. Don't forget to hit that like button. Goes a long way for me. And why do I talk about this stuff at the front of this game? Well, because there's no line or props. Detroit just upset Miami and our boy, Bojan Bogdanovic. Go ahead. Yeah, hit that like button, baby. It feels so good, doesn't it? Oh, 18 and a half points. What are we doing here, books? What are we doing? But... Why is he a lock on every other slate? But Eric, he's not a lock on this one right now, going up against the Pelicans. Well, one, I just backed up the truck of, of cash. It, it, it still has to get dropped on my doorstep before I can do anything with it. But number two, back-to-back -back Pistons going up against the Pelicans. It's a little shaky situation, and I'm going to call it a like because obviously I love Bojan Bogdanovic, 19 and a half points, done. But I don't want to be jamming this one the same way I did with Miami on the front end of the back-to-back. -back. There are chances the Pistons could rest some guys. It's a very, very trappy bad spot. You could see a double-digit spread when this one opens. I'm guessing it opens around 9, but it could be pushed towards double digits. New Orleans starting to get back to full health, only missing Brandon Ingram out of that court piece, uh, out of the court pieces there. Herbert Jones, I guess, is questionable for this one, but I do expect him to play. Devonta Graham as well. It doesn't matter nearly as much as Zion Williamson and the re-insertion uh, of CJ McCollum into this lineup. So you guys know by now, I'm always watching Bojan. You're always watching Bojan. We are the Bojan Bogdanovich fan club video on YouTube.com. So it is what it is. Pay attention to the news. Okay, we're probably going to fire a lot more than a unit here. But hey, we'll just call it a like for now. I want some more information. Next up, we have Golden State heading into Utah for this one. Big news of the night. Steph Curry will miss Wednesday's game with left ankle soreness. Yeah, hot off the wire. Hot off the presses like Bojan Bogdanovic from three. You heard me. Man's a god. I just wanted to repeat it. But Steph Curry going to be out for the Golden State Warriors on the road as are... Andrew Wiggins announced out. Draymond Green ruled out for Wednesday. This is a punt style game, but we just saw that from the Indiana side. Can Golden State possibly replicate that and, and return the favor to Utah the same way Indiana beat them down at home? No, no, I really don't think that they can. Steph Curry, Draymond Green, Andrew Wiggins, you're talking about your core three basketball players for your team now. Clay Thompson, Jordan Poole, can they be offensively efficient enough to really make something happen? Maybe they can against Utah, but without a line, without a spread, I have to blindly back Utah. And Utah's a team that we've been talking about a lot. We've attacked them at the right times. We've also backed them at the right times. And Mike Conley, questionable. Yeah, you could have a full blast, fully healthy Utah team for the very first time this season. Now, Johnny Juzang, out of UCLA, he continues to be out. He was diagnosed with a grade three sprain, but a lot of you don't even know who I'm talking about, even though a lot of you watch college basketball. Shout out UCLA. Just saying, literally, they're going to have a full blast, fully healthy team on the Utah side, and that could spell disaster for Golden State on the road. Looks like a full-on punt game. I have to lean the Utah side as a result. I doubt there's any value. Maybe, just maybe, we piece that together with something like the Indiana side. Maybe we piece it together with another play, but Utah, as it stands right now, really hard to get away from a lean in their direction. And our very last game of the night. This one, this one definitely has a like for me. I'm looking at the Boston Celtics going into the Phoenix Suns and close spread. Pretty decent total, 231 and a half. There are points expected in this one. But I think this is a bit of a broken line. Let me just count the ways that this is broken. Number one, in adjusted net rating this season, 
are the Boston Celtics. They are first in adjusted offensive rating by an absurd seven and a half points on Dugs and Three. I've never seen this kind of a spread. This difference of seven and a half points is so unrealistic for everything that I know about basketball that I can't even tell you. Now, they're 15th in adjusted defensive rating, which is problematic. And Phoenix being third in adjusted offensive rating and ninth in adjusted defensive rating. Pretty interesting to see the breakdown of how these two teams match up. Chris Paul could possibly play upgraded to when uh, upgraded to questionable on Wednesday. Torrey Craig questionable for Wednesday. Lots of injury pieces to look at from the Phoenix side, but I think if Chris Paul got ruled out, this number would be mo moved to about two and a half or three. I think books might be might be pricing him in in this spot, making it a pretty intriguing back of the Boston side. What else is going on with Boston? Well, they're going to get Malcolm Brogdon back in the mix after he missed their last game. You're going to look at uh, a lot of other pieces in, in Al Horford and Marcus Smart continuing to be uh, active for him. We've seen this team play shorthanded a lot recently, and I don't think that's fully being factored in because this is the best team in basketball, not just by record, 20 and 5, best record by far in the NBA right now, but... Best numbers statistically that I've seen in a long time, especially in the offensive end of the floor. We're talking Golden State mid-2010. So I definitely like the Boston side. I don't want to get in a huge habit of betting spreads when there are no major pieces of injury news that can shift. Chris Paul, does he really matter this late in his career uh, to shift this number, you know, another two points? I don't think he would, but maybe the books do. I just think one and a half is an incorrect number as is. This should be more around three and a half. I understand it's on the road, but give me the Boston laying the point and a half inside of a bucket. They get it done to finish off our night on Wednesday. And that does it for another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. You know what to do. Head to that comment section below. Let me know how much money you want on Bojan Bogdanovic on Tuesday. Let me know how much money you're going to put him on. T you don't have to do that. Just let me know if you're happy and you know it. Clap your hands. That's all I want to see, okay? So do that, and then make sure you bet Drake to beat Omaha. Omaha, Omaha. They're definitely going to be losing uh, to the old Drake Bulldogs on Wednesday. So take advantage of that. Bet $5 on the money line at DraftKings.com. Uh, click on that link in the video description box below. Deposit $5 more. Bet $5 on that Drake money line. Get yourself $150 to, to use instantly on any sport, specifically in the NBA streets following this video, though. I'll be back on Thursday, y'all. Until then, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the NBA streets on Wednesday.